Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, answering a question that exactly nobody has asked, and that is, what is Ka? Now, it's a shame nobody asked that because Ka is absolutely awesome. If you've never heard of it, stay tuned because you're really going to enjoy this. Also, if you're interested in learning the Armory game engine that I've been talking so much about, you're going to want to know about Ka because Ka is the underlying technology. It's the special sauce or the magic that makes Armory work. And if you're going to be doing any hack scripting in Armory, you are going to probably be using Ka because it provides the low-level functionality Armory depends on. So what exactly is Ka? Well, Ka is a hacks-based, open-source, cross-platform, and when I say cross-platform, I mean cross-platform, extremely cross-platform, low-level game framework. If you've ever used the SDL library, you got an idea what Ka is. That's um, pretty much what Ka is. As they say, Ka is SDL on steroids. It provides that low-level functionality, uh, the graphics, the sound, 3D, shaders, that kind of stuff. And it does so in a cross-platform way. And as I kind of emphasized a couple seconds ago, extremely cross-platform. Pretty much every platform you ever thought of is supported. Also, Ka has its own IDE, Code Studio, which is actually Visual Studio Code pre-configured for Ka development, which we will see in action today. Now, as mentioned earlier, Ka is open source. It is available on GitHub. I will throw both the Ka homepage and the Ka GitHub page link down below, as well as the link to Ka Studio or to Code Studio. Now, Ka, as I mentioned earlier a couple of times, feature-wise, it is providing that low-level functionality, things like uh, graphics and audio. And the cool thing is it provides it in a fallback manner. So for example, on the HTML5 platform, if WebGL2 is not available, it will run on WebGL1. If WebGL1 is not available, it will run on Canvas. If Canvas is not available, what browser are you using? So anyways, it has a lot of fallback. On top of that, to support cross-platform manners, it does some other really cool things, such as this one right here. Basically, GLSL is the shader form for OpenGL. Now, what happens if you run on a platform such as Windows UWP, which only supports HLSL or the DirectX shader language? Well, it handles that for you. It, it transpiles your HL, uh, sorry, your GL. SL shaders into HLS shaders and you don't need to worry about it. Pretty cool stuff. On top of that, it can compile down to a C-sharp or Java library, or perhaps even more impressively, it can actually ca compile down to Unity. Yeah, you can actually create code that runs on the Unity platform. And here are the platforms that Kaw currently supports. HTML5, as I mentioned, with those three different fallbacks. U Windows, Universal Windows Platform, Mac OS, Linux, Android via C++ or Java, iOS via Metal or OpenGL, you know, to put the whole controversy of this week behind us, it actually already supports metal. Uh, TV OS, Raspberry Pi, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, Tizen, Flash, Unity 3D, Node.js, Java AWT, and C Sharp WPF. Now, there are a couple of requirements before you can go ahead and run Ka. You need to install hacks. Straightforward enough, you just head on over to the hacks.org website, run the installer. It is like five megabytes, which is awesome to install an entire compiler chain in five megabytes. And then Node. And chances are you probably already have Node installed on your machine because of a previous requirement. It's sort of becoming the tool lingua franca of choice for just about everything. So if you want to test it, open up a command prompt or a terminal, type the word node. If it throws an error at you, you got to come here and get the installer. If it doesn't, hey, good to go. You've already got it installed. So those are the requirements. Basically, you have to have hacks and you have to have node installed, but that's it. And then the easiest way to get started using um, Ka is to probably download Code Studio. As I mentioned, Code Studio is a version of Visual Studio Code pre-configured to working with Ka. Now, you can also install Ka as an extension to Visual Studio Code, uh, but I found it's not one-to-one -one for functionality. I actually ran into a couple of errors and problems when I used Visual Studio Code that I didn't run into if I went ahead and used uh, their own IDE, this Code Studio. And running it is simple enough, just download it, extract it out, and then run the executable inside of it. Now I'm gonna show you the entire process of creating a Ka project, and this is staggeringly simple. So here I am inside of uh, Code Studio. I go and open a folder. I'm gonna go into my temp directory and make a new folder. I don't know, what, I need to have a new name. It's gotta be empty, so I will call this resguflargook. All right, guaranteed that that name is not used. So basically empty a, or create an empty directory like so, and select the folder, 
And then really that's it. So you got to open up an empty directory in Visual Studio Code or in Code Studio. And then once you've got that ready, bring up the palette, either Control Shift P or the much easier to press F1. Uh, I'll let it run its thing for a second here. So Hacks is initializing. So let's just let that run so we don't have an issue in the background. All right, so now that that's ready, we'll go ahead, once again, press F1 to bring up the command palette. And what you want to do to create a new Ka project, it's just basically type Ka. You will see the option of init Ka project, like so. Go ahead and do that. Basically, this turns this, it scaffolds a basic project for you. So you drill down here into sources. You can see there is your main, like so. Very simple. And it is creating this project, which you will notice does pretty much nothing. So now that that is done and we have a working project, you could basically hit F5 at any time to run it. This will do the compilation requirements, run it, and then in this particular case, the default is the JavaScript target, which will run on Electron. And here you see, here is your game running. Nothing too exciting going on there because our game is literally empty. Uh, but as you can see, if we go back over here to the main window, uh, where do you go files? Here, all we really did was created a 1024 by 768 window and then passed in our empty class to it. Um, but that is the gist of how you get Ka up and running. Very simple. Create a new folder and then initialize a Ka project there. When you are done with your project and you want to compile it for the various different platforms that Ka supports, you once again hit F1 or Control Shift P to bring up the palette and you type compile Ka project. When you select this, then you can see the wealth of platforms that are available. You pick the platform you want to compile for, and then boom, it does its magic behind the scenes. Now do keep in mind, there are going to be additional requirements here. So for example, if you pick Node.js, you need to have Node.js installed. If you pick C++, you need to have C++ installed. If you pick uh, C Sharp, guess what? You have to have C Sharp installed, etc. But you get the idea. It is that simple to compile for various different platforms. For example, if I wanted to compile this one for the Windows platform, I just do, and off it goes and builds an executable for me. So building for various different platforms using Kaw is staggeringly easy. And you'll see in the background, uh, it's firing off my local copy of Visual C++. Now, this is obviously going to take a lot longer than running in the uh, virtual machine that or, or the Electron-hosted uh, JavaScript because, well, it is doing full compilation. And uh, yeah, so I kind of regret doing that now, to be honest. So I'm just going to pause while it does its thing. All right, there you go. So after some time of compilation, you will see that it went ahead and built it for us. We come over here to the output. You will see the release folder. There is the executable generated for us. And on top, it was also nice enough to build a Visual Studio Solution project for us and a Visual C project file for us. So. Uh, Pretty cool stuff. It's pretty seamless to, to port and compile for various different other languages using Ka. Now, you're probably interested in getting your hands on some actual code to work with. And there, I would recommend heading on over to Ka samples. Again, I will throw this link down below. There's a number of different samples you could go ahead and uh, download from. Uh, this isn't what I thought it was. Just a second. Um, but we'll go with this mesh loader one. Let's go on in here, grab the repository, like so. Uh, fire up your trusty command line. And uh, what I do is a git clone dash dash recursive. Nice, nice if I could spell. And then paste that guy in there, like so. And this will run and download all the various different dependencies. Not that exciting to look at. Uh, but once that is done, we have our project ready to go. We can head on over here to hacks. And then it is simply a matter of opening up that folder. So we go here to open folder. It is mesh something or other, mesh loader for this particular project. Open it up. And da, 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 da. Give it a sec to do its code completions and such like that. So there, it's doing the uh, completions. It is done. It is ready to go. And then once you run this code, just press F5. And that will build the default target. Like so. And here you go. 3D scene showing a mesh in action. And then if you did not want to particularly run it that way particularly, so that was F5, it debugged it as the HTML5 target. I could instead switch to the Chrom target and do the exact same thing. And instead of running in an Electron host, this will instead uh, give me an error apparently. Stop that, let's try that again. 
All right. We'll just ignore that that happened. Uh, basically, it would have just run it in the Chrome virtual machine instead. I, I'm not sure what the underlying issue is there, but um, yeah, something happened. Anyway, so that, that is pretty much Ka. Now, keep in mind, for most people, Ka is going to be a low-level tool that other people build game engines on top of. And like I said, with iOS and macOS doing things like uh, deprecating OpenGL support, having a layer that abstracts away the underlying renderer is definitely a nice thing. So if you're working in hacks, Ka is definitely something you should consider checking out. Also, as I mentioned right off the hop, this is the underlying... Um, framework that um, Armory 3D is built over top of. So you will see in a lot of the hacks code in Armory, it is calling Ka code. So what you're gonna probably wanna get familiar with if you are using Armory um, is the documentation here for Ka, which again, I will link down below. But you come in here, it's basically got a good overview of the pieces that go together to make Ka, uh, game engines and games that have been built using Ka. And then on top, and come on down here to the uh, the documentation, and then here you can get the class drill down, and these are all the various different layers of stuff that are available in Ka. So Ka provides math routines for fast matrices, etc., vector graphics, etc., etc., etc. But again, if you're using Armory 3D, what you're going to find is Armory is using Ka for things like the vector class that it uses. So if you are going to be creating a complicated game using Armory, there is no doubt in my mind you will eventually be using Ka as well. So it's a bit of the, uh, again, the, the magic technology behind the scenes. And a lot of times it doesn't get the attention it deserves. Just like, like the SDL library is used to provide the cross-platform input layer on so many other game engines, but you don't necessarily know that because it's a plumbing low-level tool. And that's why I decided to showcase it today. So even though you don't necessarily, you may not be creating a game engine and Ka may not be of use to you, it is still relevant to know that it exists. And again, if you are going to be an Armory developer, it's very relevant that you know that it exists because you are no doubt going to be writing some code that touches Ka at some point in time. Or even if you're using the node-based interface, those nodes are implementing Ka code behind the scenes. And this is the magic secret sauce that enables the Armory game edge to target so many different cool platforms, renderers, and technologies. And if you don't want to deal with any of that crap, you don't want to deal with platformers just cutting off your ability to use your given technology. An abstraction layer is a wonderful thing, and Ka is a wonderful abstraction layer. So that's why I decided to share it today. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Have you checked out Hacks or Armory? Are you interested in learning more about Ka? Do let me know. I'd be interested in hearing it. That's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.